Welcome to this very special video where I'm going to be showing you how to use DeepSeek R1 in an actual useful way that's going to completely change how you think about using these local LLMs. Let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to install Olama. So just go on olama.com, download, download it for your system, right? The second thing you want to do is you want to pull the model that you want to use, okay? So I'm going to click on DeepSeek R1 here, and then you can choose which one is going to work on your system. I chose the 8 billion. You might be able to get 14 billion, maybe even 32, maybe even 70. I just picked the one that works best for my system. So what does that look like? I'm going to go to command prompt, and basically what you would do is you would say Olama run DeepSeek R1 8B like this. Okay, mine is already installed, so I don't have to go through the install process. What yours will look like is if you do this and then send this, it will start to pull and then it'll start to download this, um, this LLM version, right? But we already have this on our system. So I think there's a lot of confusion about what this actually looks like, right? So you can interact with the local version of your script or you can interact with a local version of the model, okay? So you can say like, hello, and it will reply to you. That doesn't seem that useful though, right? So like what the hell is actually the point of this? So it's actually useful for a much more interesting way. You can interact with it as I just showed you, but you can also do something much more interesting. You can create a Python, JavaScript script, it doesn't really matter, that interacts with Olama with code and calls the model, right? So what does this actually look like? I just went to ChatGPT and I said, write a script that connects to Olama and does something with Olama through Python. It gave me this very simple script here, right? Um, and you can just take this onto Visual Studio Code and you could do file, open folder, new, new folder, Python. And then we go here, new file, hi.py, paste this. Now you actually have something that can interact with the model, right? So let's go here. First of all, we need the name of the model. So we'll go back to uh, command prompt and we'll just run, I think it's Olama list, if I'm not mistaken. And this will give us the model, right? So we change the model name here with this model name. And then I'm gonna save this. Now, if I run this Python hi.py, what is it gonna do? It's going to send this prompt to my local version of R1, which we should be able to see if I go on task manager, we should see a huge memory spike here, but I actually can't. It doesn't seem to be using that much, which is pretty interesting. And then it will actually eventually, it, it might take a little bit of time, but it will give a response to this question, explain the importance of SEO for online businesses. There we go. So here's the thinking, and then SEO or search engine, uh, engine optimization plays a pivotal role in enhancing the online product, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is really, really cool, right? This is actually a useful thing to be doing with R1, right? So let's make this even more useful. So I just said to ChatGPT, add LLM JSON mode to this, please. Also, my model is DeepSeek R1 8B. So if we copy this script here, what this does is it says, provide a JSON object with SEO tips for small businesses, right? So we actually have the basage, basis of something very, very interesting here, okay? So we can make workflows locally, get them to work, and then either use them to automate something, right? Or you could sell the workflow that you've made as a SaaS, for example. So I'm gonna make a workflow for you guys in front of everyone, and it, the workflow is just gonna be very, very simple. I've made something like this before for Harbor, okay? So we're gonna use something called Gina, Sorry, that was my cat just causing trouble as usual. Gina is a, um, it, it turns web pages into LLM friendly responses, right? Um, so let's say we scrape, for example, <clears throat> two men dot it. Then it'll come back with all of the content for that page, right? So this is kind of what I'm gonna be doing. I'm going to be using Gina Okay, so we take a sitemap. We don't necessarily need to use Gina to create the sitemap, right? We send all of the URLs to prompt one. 
prompt one, which says for this keyword, select 10 or 20 or 30 relevant uh, web pages, right? So choose. And then once this prompt is chosen, all those web pages will be sent to Gina, which will scrape them. And then uh, prompt two will be a JSON object, including things like price, images, etc. And then that'll feed all of that good information to what you could then do as a writing prompt. But I don't think I'll do a writing prompt today. I'm just going to keep things fairly simple and create a universal scraper in the next couple of minutes using just uh, DeepSeek and a, the worst version of ChatGPT. Okay, so what does this actually look like? So I'm going to say, now please use this exact um, uh, uh, example you've given me to create the following workflow. Number one, take an input of a sitemap URL. Two, scrape, no, um, take all the URLs from the sitemap URL. Some sitemaps are indexes, some sitemaps are not indexes. Take that into account. Number three would be to choose relevant URLs according to a keyword input. For example, best sneakers for men 2025. Four, send all relevant URLs from, uh, wait, this is a deep seek R1 prompt number one. Send all relevant URLs from uh, prompt one to a Gina scrape. So we'll just go back to Gina here. We need to create our, um, we need to create our call, right? So there's a couple of things that I want to change here. I want to change. This is all fine. Uses reader LMV2 for HTML to markdown conversion to deliver high quality results for websites with complex structures and content. No. I want to exclude selector header and footer because they're just not needed. And then I think that's totally fine. Everything else is totally fine. So we'll send this, right? This will be the basis of the call. So here is a, an example. Gina call. There we go. Send all relevant URLs from prompt one to a Gina scrape, um, which the response of uh, each page should then be sent to prompt two. Gina turns web pages into LLM readable text, including images, etc. And then number five should be uh, scrape scrape the pages and output. This is uh, DeepSeek uh, R1 prompt number two. Scrape the pages and output in JSON, things like pricing, description, images, um, I don't know, uh, features, specifications, and anything else you can think of. So apart from that, I don't think there's actually any code needed here. So we'll just hit enter here and see how this works. Okay, so we need to install some dependencies. It does need beautiful soup to scrape the uh, the sitemap. You could probably get away with not using beautiful soup, but it's fine. So let's have a look here. So model name, Gina API key, it's fine. They, this refreshes every week anyway. It's not like this is a private one. Uh, use DeepSeek R1 to filter relevant URLs based on a keyword. Okay, where do I input the keyword? So this is basically Harbor, but like, well, just this, the sitemap scraping part of Harbor, but like a very, very uh, simple, but also completely free version of this. So I'll be very curious to see if this actually works. Um, where do I input my keyword? Oh, here we go.
Okay, but how do I actually, how do I input my keyword and sitemap URL? Oh, it will prompt it, right. Okay, that's pretty cool. So let's try this. So Python high.py. Oh yeah, it actually works. That's pretty fucking sick. Twoman.it slash sitemap.xml. Okay, so we'll paste that. Press enter. Keyword best men's sneakers 125. Okay. And find a tree builder with the features you requested. So do you need to know? Yeah, I need to install a parser. Okay, so we'll just pip install LL, whatever. We'll run that again. Give it the sitemap. Obviously, to work first time is, is not very likely. Best sneakers for men 2025. So it's fetching URLs from sitemap. This looks like it's probably going to work. This is using Olama completely free. This is just using my system's uh, CPU or GPU or whatever the hell it uses. This might take a bit of time. Okay, so I didn't manage to extract any. It's pretty close to being complete. I would guess that the problem here is that um, there's too many, uh, too many URLs, so it's too big. There are probably too many URLs, so please just restrict it to the first... Uh, restrict it to base URL sitemaps only, ignoring foreign language sitemaps. So let's just send it this so it understands. So none of the above except the first few should be considered. Okay, so we have this working now. It did take a little bit of time. However, interestingly enough, it's it, it, it doesn't have the intelligence that, you know, we're kind of looking for. So it says relevant URLs. Remember, the keyword is best sneakers for men. This is a coat. These are dress pants. These are dress pants. These are dress pants. Now, obviously, this could be to do with prompting, but you can just see that it's not as intelligent as something like anthropic however overall this does work you can see this is getting the images as well it's just not intelligent enough to actually find the correct products right so if you run this with anthropic instead of um instead of um r1 this will work okay now, it could be to do with the batch size. Maybe the batch size is too small here, so it can't actually find anything relevant. But yeah, I would expect this to be a lot more intelligent, to be honest with you. So you can see here, scraping results. If these were all sneakers, this would be perfect, but they're actually not. So I would probably go back to using Anthropic for this. But yeah, this is how you can use completely for free DeepSeek R1 to automate your processes, okay? Now, I will say I did use Claude to create this. Um, ChatGPT 4.0 just wasn't cutting it, so I had to switch over to Claude. But yeah, overall, I'm really, really happy with the results here. It's just not quite intelligent enough. Now, we could change the prompting here. Um, so we could say, like, um, we can say, like, the slug of the URL must contain the main word of the keyword. For example, if the keyword is best sneakers, you must only return URLs with sneakers in the slug, right? So we can try that, but again, it's ju I just don't think it, the model is, is as intelligent as people are making out. Again, we would we could be using you know the 14 bill or the 70 bill. I can only use this. Um, I can only use this version. Okay, so so yeah, it's it's actually not it, it it's failed again. It's not intelligent enough in my opinion. Um, but yeah, we could do a few more things like we could shuffle um, the order uh, and things like that. But yeah, despite the fact that you can do this completely for free. 
if it's not intelligent enough, then it's kind of pointless. But I just wanted to show people how they could automate or how you can automate certain things. You can now take this, right, and start to turn it into a auto blogger, right? So you can have a new file called keywords.csv, right? And then you can have like best sneakers 2025, best men's coats 2025, best whatever, right? And then you can input the CSV into high.py, right? And um, what, what will that do? It will mean that you could then run this 24 seven, just generating content and outputting into Markdown, for example, right? But yeah, I just wanted to talk about this, guys. I think this is super, super interesting, but I do think it is lacking some intelligence. Thanks for watching, guys. This is my basic guide to running SEO tools and things like that locally on your computer using Olama and DeepSeek. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.